Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good uh, evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the IIS Islamic Finance Talk series. In this series, we will be discussing one of the important topics, namely the Islamic social finance and its role in COVID-19 recovery planning. Uh, as we are aware, despite uh, the various adverse effects of COVID-19 on health and economy, the pandemic uh, has sparked a significant attention toward Islamic social financial instrument and socially responsible investment or SRI. Many countries nowadays have adopted Islamic social finance instrument for their economic recovery planning. For instance, the government of Indonesia on 19 October 2020, issued a retail cash workout linked to Cook to finance its economic, uh, 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 its economic recovery uh, planning. The shift toward Islamic social finance would reinforce Islamic finance value proposition as a responsible finance industry pursuing goals beyond profit striving for a just and fair system, promoting brotherhood and cooperation, and developing a commodity-oriented and entrepreneur-friendly environment. To discuss further on the topic, on the role of Islamic social finance in COVID-19 recovery planning, we are delighted to bring you Dr. Rifki Ismail, who is an Assistant Secretary General for Standard and Research of the Islamic Financial Service Board, IFSB, based in Malaysia. He is currently also a member of the National Shariah Board, Dewan Shariah National of MUI, Indonesia, as well as a Deputy Director in Bank Indonesia, the Central Bank of Indonesia, besides also lecturing in some universities in Indonesia, like uh, University of Indonesia, Tazkia Institute, as well as IPB. Uh, Dr. Rifki Ismail got a bachelor degree in economics from the University of Indonesia, master in applied economic from the University of Michigan, uh, uh, United States of America, and PhD in Islamic finance from Durham University. Without uh, further ado, uh, let us uh, welcome uh, Dr. Rifki Ismail to present uh, his uh, presentation. Please, Dr. Rifki, time is yours. Ya, Masya Allah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mahmoudi, a very kind introduction. I'm actually an ordinary person, nothing special with me. <laughs> so it's very honor to be honest, uh, invited by AIIS, yeah. if I'm not mistaken to spell it, yeah. I, I, A, I, S, yeah. Yeah, I, I, S, I, yes, yeah, stand I, yes, yeah. Stand for International Institute of Advanced Islamic Studies. Oh, okay, okay. So it is honored for me to be invited and to share some of my very limited knowledge on the topic here. Yeah. And also, I'm very glad here that we, I mean, at least myself, I am now having some colleagues here. Even though, I mean, probably in the question and answer, we can have a direct discussion with uh, honorable, a lot of colleagues here. Uh, probably I'm not going to mention one by one. <laughs> Inshallah, during the discussion, we can have a direct uh, interaction. So please allow me to share uh, my ideas regarding the topic. Yeah. So this is coming uh, mostly from Indonesian case, but also uh, uh, in some cases, some examples are also applicable for the world, world cases. Yeah. So we want to discuss about the roles of Islamic social finance in the pandemic and beyond. Yeah. So I will uh, start or divide my presentation with uh, three parts, impact of the pandemic to the economy and policy measures, the roles of Islamic social finance, Islamic social finance during and after pandemic. Yeah. So this is the impact of the pandemic as we all know that the pandemic is uh, happening anywhere in the world. Yeah. I, I don't think there is any single country in the world uh, free from pandemic yeah, because it has spread it all over the world. Yeah. So when it happened first time, at least in Indonesia, it happened in, in March uh, 2020. Yeah. 
it was responded by a lot of policies in many countries like lockdown in particular like in in malaysia we have been locked down since january uh, since june first yeah indonesia we just recently being locked down uh, even though not total only partial lockdown and then of course uh, this type of responses the country responses to to mitigate to to stop the spread of a pandemic uh, give a huge impact to the contractions of the economic activities particularly gdp yeah there is a huge drop in the volume of international transactions demand and supply in domestic economy also there is a contraction of financial market activities yeah and in some cases there is a flight to quality like in indonesia for example i do believe also in in other emerging markets like in malaysia when we uh, firstly had uh, the pandemic and then because there is a huge uncertainty in the economy the investors tend to uh, tend to locate uh, the investment to the uh, to the more safer uh, financial market like we tend to say it flight to quality we find a new heaven <laughs> that is a, a new term among uh, foreign investors to find new heaven for uh, investment uh, for investing money in in financial market uh, i mean beside that one of course as we uh, realize that export import are contracting yeah supply disruptions and of, of course at the end of the day it impacts uh, exchange rate the financial system stability inflation to be honest inflation and exchange rate are quite stable actually even there is a well uh, well maintained inflation in indonesia it is not because of we are successful to manage the inflation but because demand and supply are both contracting yeah and there is no much uh, demand from uh, from the public also there is not much supply of of goods yeah from the supplier so both sides are contracting so there is uh, of course uh, a contraction in economic activities and economic growth but uh, globally globally the world bank identified that uh, there are some crucial impact uh, of the pandemic yeah and then uh, firstly of course the social distancing impact yeah? all around the world uh, they are applying like you know, social distancing work from home uh, and internet infrastructures because we are working from home so we need to have extra spending for infrastructure for internet for in, uh, I mean, uh, digital kind of communication also macro exposure financial condition commodity prices there is a there is a drop in uh, commodity market and confidence effect trade spillover vulnerabilities yeah health system in in countries which have uh, not advanced uh, health system might have very uh, crucial very very serious problem in healthcare but for countries having a very advanced health system they may not have very serious problem on this social protection debt policy space yeah. and then a policy effectiveness it might have like health and containment fiscal and monetary financial policies and global coordination so those are some of the impact based on the identification from world bank regarding uh, the covid-19 but particularly there are some challenges yeah when we talk about pandemic firstly regarding timing the uncertainty how to design policies when we don't know how long lasting uh, this will be so interestingly i keep mentioning to my colleagues yeah uh, i i have a joke with my colleagues i mentioned to to them that uh, even a person uh, who is having a very strong uh, quantitative background may not predict this type of a uh, pandemic situation because this is not kind of a quantitative aspect this is social and even it is getting difficult to estimate something very uncertain because like even when we were quite sure at least in indonesia uh, last time i believe like couple of months back when we had only 2000 cases but then currently we have <laughs> mashallah up to 56000 cases new cases from two on from only 2000 so it rose mashallah drastically 
So and nobody, I I don't think uh, anybody in Indonesia predicted before that from 2000 into 56,000. So it is very unpredictable, very difficult, yeah, to predict this type of uh, pandemic situation. Also, large real sector shock. Yeah, how to address large solvency problem? Yeah, fiscal implication. Because I believe, because in, in the IFSB, we did some surveys in the beginning of the pandemic, during the pandemic, and even right now, we do believe that some countries are, are facing post-pandemic, hopefully. Yeah, like, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't want to uh, optimistically uh, say some countries are uh, having a post-pandemic condition, but they uh, some of them claim that they have successfully uh, mitigate or manage this uh, pandemic, yeah? So we have surveyed them. What are your policies post-pandemic? What do you plan post-pandemic? And how was the impact of uh, uh, the last pandemic in your countries and so on? A majority of them said they have fiscal deficit. Of course, it is very hard condition. So the government tend to issue securities or because they need huge budget, extra budget, yeah, to prepare or to mitigate the impact of pandemic. And the simplest way for them to gain extra budget is coming from central bank. So just simply issue the securities and central bank will purchase them, the securities. And it is the, the simplest, the easiest. Even uh, some of them say, we can have a burden sharing, a burden sharing rather than the government per se to share this type of burden because it is the national burden. So it can be shared with the central bank, with other regulators. So, Again, at the end of uh, at the end of the day, this is the burden. This is the the extra extra condition for the government in the way ahead after pandemic. Also, usual policy transmission it doesn't work. How to reach all uh, those uh, all those affected? How to bring back supply capacity and minimize caring? How to fund the deficit? How to deal with sudden stop? Preserve for ex resources and all of the things are being the challenges of, of the pandemic. And then these are a common policies taken by majority of countries as being anticipated and as being uh, uh, surveyed by the FSB and also I believe other countries as well. Yeah. So the common policies are lockdown, rapid and massive test, travel ban, social physical distancing, work from home, study from home, no public event, punishment or sanction, and particularly on certain policies like fiscal, uh, uh, I mean, uh, based on our survey as well, majority of, I'm not saying majority, but all of countries that are being surveyed by IFSB say that they provide fiscal stimulus yeah, to, to, the, to the real sector, to the economy, by, increase, uh, by increasing the budget for health system, assisting households, workers, social safety net, recovering economic sector suffered by COVID-19. And for the monetary policy and fin uh, financial stimulus, they lower a uh, benchmark rate. Even like in Japan, they apply minus interest rate and quantitative easing, postponement of the loan repayment, uh, restructuring of financing, moratorium, financing facility, and uh, many, many other policies. Yeah. And for Islamic finance, Islamic economic in particular, there are also some policies taken by Islamic jurisdiction. Yeah? Supporting liquidity for Islamic businesses, court Hassan and a corporate social responsibility fund, digitalizing of Islamic economic activities, social funds for the needy, restructuring of Islamic financing, lowering the reserve, yeah, statutory reserve requirement uh, for banks, and special Islamic securities for social purpose. These are only some of the Islamic social fund policy. And then uh, particularly, how is the role of Islamic social finance? Yeah. In fact, as we all know, yeah, that uh, social finance, for example, Zaka, Infraq, Sudaka, and Aukap, yeah, uh, these are uh, applicable for both productive and consumptive activities, yeah, for, the, for productive one can be used like for valuing capacity building zakat distribution and partnership for the mustahik uh, for the consumptive one uh, can also be like uh, fulfilling the basic needs of the mustahik 
and at the end it will also assist it will also uh, help the muzaki particularly to to ease the economic activities yeah social facilities like aukaf yeah it will ease both the mustahik and muzaki in terms of facilitating the, the public uh, infrastructures for example public facilities yeah and then for like aukaf for commercial purposes because aukaf can be used for both social and commercial purposes i mean uh, we can have a return coming from uh, aukaf but it is not the main uh, the main intention uh, if there is uh, a return coming from aukaf it can also be replaced to support the uh, islamic activities islamic social funds activities so uh, at the end uh, islamic social finance can support both consumptive and productive economic activities can upgrade the status of mustahik and can facilitate public facilities and need so if we uh, kind of look in the broader perspective yeah, uh, in the economy yeah, we we can identify that for commercial aspect commercial sector there are banks and non banks yeah with banking product non bank product and financial markets with stock for example or security sukuk for example and there are also others like fiscal policy from the government side the government issues sukuk or also receive tax yeah from the public also social so we put social sector here yeah together with commercial activities and government activities like social at least we identify two two main uh, instruments here uh, aukaf and zaka so these two instruments can assist us for providing fixed asset yeah aukaf money and uh, zaka financing i mean for the needies i mean of course zaka is for eight asnaf but uh, if we allocate the zaka properly the zaka funds can be uh, used by eight asnaf to to help them uh, mitigate the poverty to help them like having small business for example to to relieve from the suffer condition yeah so at the end this social sector can assist the low income society which will at the end uh, serve the, the the economic of a country yeah together with commercial sector and government sector for both production and consumption so how do we like accelerate outcome outcome for activities yeah at least three things that we identify of course there are main uh, there are other sectors other aspects to be considered at least when we want to accelerate outcome yeah we need to be uh, aware of legal base yeah we need to have legal act or legal or act or government regulation uh, regarding outcome also corporate management this is a crucial issue nowadays at least if i can share in case of indonesia yeah we have a lot of aukaf asset yeah we have 435000 location of aukaf land uh, can you imagine 435000 land which are aukaf land yeah uh, and uh, most of them are not certified yes sir. They, they they are not properly certificated yeah by the authorities <laughs> interesting very interesting and then uh, of course our cup is maintained by nazir and then when we talk about nazir again uh, compare with others nazir is not properly like uh, maintained and supervised by the authority so we keep mentioning to the nazir please upgrade yourself yeah Uh, please uh, i mean have proper training or learn from well established institution to have a proper a uh, corporate management because nazir is maintaining aukaf fund yeah uh, either like a physical uh, aukaf uh, asset or uh, aukaf fund like a cash aukaf or something very liquid yeah so a trust yeah, a skill to manage liquidity skill to manage the portfolio of uh, our half investment are very important for nazir so these are left behind which is a very crucial aspect of uh, managing the outcome social and philanthropic spirit yeah of course uh, our cup is a social and philanthropic fund yeah cannot be motivated for having like huge profit 
coming from Aukaf because Aukaf is a Tabaru contract. Yeah, we cannot expect a profit coming from Tabaru contract. Otherwise, uh, if there is uh, there is profit, it can be reused for the sake of the public. Yeah. So uh, to mitigate and uh, to, 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 to ensure that uh, Aukaf management is uh, properly uh, managed, professionally proceeded, uh, we, uh, I mean, uh, there was a working group like uh, 2016, back 2016, 2017, in which I was one of the working group members yeah, to construct the international standard for outcome. So this standard uh, has been adopted by Islamic Development Bank. So we issued already, alhamdulillah, this outcome. Uh, international standard for AUKAF management. We call it International AUKAF Core Principle, WCP, yeah, uh, issued by Islamic Development Bank. I think back in 2018, yeah, when we firstly issued this standard. So some countries have adopted this one, Alhamdulillah, because we capture a lot of issues regarding AUKAF management, regarding transparency, management of funds, portfolio, uh, legal basis, a lot of things. If you want, I can give you the, the document. So uh, if I can share also regarding the Indonesian experience on, of course, Indonesia is not advanced in our CAF. We try, we try to improve our condition, our, our, CAF, uh, our, our, our CAF sector. Yeah? We have identified a strategic partnership. Yeah? Uh, among uh, Minister of Finance, Santa Bank, Bank Indonesia, Minister of Religion, and w, uh, BWI, uh, Badan Wakaf Indonesia, also Lembaga Amil Zakat, ya, Amil, the Amil, Amil Institution, to collaborate each other, yeah, to, uh, to, to, uh, to accelerate, yeah, to inflate, to, to foster this AUKAF uh, uh, sector, yeah, together with Nazir. So we have program. So we have we 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 are not only uh, establishing a strategic partnership, but we, alhamdulillah, uh, did some program, yeah, to 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 realize and to utilize this uh, potential, yeah. So these are some of our activities, by the way, yeah. So uh, we identify there are a lot of our plan, yeah, in Indonesia. So we realize that in Mecca, for example, our plan can be used to, to build a Zamzam Tower in Mecca, our Kaf Tower in Abu Dhabi, and also hospital. Yeah. Uh, and then in, this is Indonesian case, Dompet Du Afa. So Dompet Du Afa is one of the Amil institution yeah, in Indonesia. So Dompet Du Afa uh, collected uh, our Kaf money, has our Kaf, and then they use it uh, together with other social funds to construct, to build uh, Dompet to Afa. We call it Rumah Sehat, not Rumah Sakit. <laughs> because Rumah Sakit tend to be negative, so we change into Rumah Sehat Terpadu. It is the, the first uh, hospital built by uh, Dompet to Afa. Yeah, for, of course, for the needy. Yeah. Also, in Al-Rajid, is very famous. Yeah, I, I don't think I can share with I mean, in detail about this because I believe all of you will are very familiar with this. So another thing, we are not only uh, uh, using our cup fund, for example, to build infrastructure, but we also uh, think of, and we also not only think, for example, we do some uh, programs in agriculture. Yeah. So these are our programs yeah, to, 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 uh, to, to help, yeah, to assist the SME, by using our cup money, yeah. by using also a social fund yeah. to, to give some training, to give some like extra capital for the SME. Yeah. Like uh, in the right hand side, if you can see, there is a collaboration between Bank Indonesia yeah, by giving Kordul Hassan a yeah, free loan to Lembaga Zakat Al Azhar. This is the Amil, Amil Zakah in Al Azhar. Uh, what is it? Uh, a school. There is a school called Al Azhar here in in Indonesia. So the foundation or Yayasan, we call it Yayasan Al Azhar in Indonesia. So we have a collaboration 
to utilize the Cordul Hassan fund from uh, Bank Indonesia, uh, Bank Indonesia Social Fund, yeah, to be extended uh, to, to, to the needy, yeah, uh, to the SME, yeah, to inflate, to develop uh, further their project. Yeah. Of course, we are not only uh, giving financing, but we also give uh, some supervision to them. Yeah. But of course, Bank Indonesia is not the authority yeah, to, to train like SME uh, for the specific activities, but we, uh, we are partnering with like uh, Minister of Cooperative in Indonesia, also with Al Azhar, yeah, to, to be together and to, to give them some extra supervision, training, everything. Yeah. So finally, Alhamdulillah, we have, uh, we have been successful to increase their products, if you can see. On the bottom, yeah, tomato, chili, everything, yeah. So we have increased at least uh, their product, agriculture product, alhamdulillah. Uh, and then beside that one, we also uh, have uh, uh, what is it? Mm. Extra program with the pesantren. I believe uh, pesantren is not a very strange a name in Malaysia. Yeah, boarding school. There are a lot of pesantren in Malaysia. So uh, in Indonesia, uh, Bank Indonesia, Mini of Ministry of Religion, yeah, and other parties, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Muhammadiyah, Nadatu Ulama, yeah, also Badan Amil Zakat, we are together yeah, to supervise pesantren, particularly the economic unit of the pesantren. Yeah. So we come up with a specific program, specific fund yeah, to accelerate their uh, economic unit. Yeah. To assist the uh, pesantren group of farmers, entrepreneurs, everything. So we are not only again uh, uh, give them funding, but also uh, pro prepare them a program, yeah. supervision program, and we also uh, find them a mentor. So we have uh, uh, what is it? Uh, chosen one big pesantren, which is the the best pesantren in Indonesia which is a very advanced in economic uh, activities. Uh, it is called uh, Nurul Iman. Yeah, Nurul Iman, one of the best pesantren in Indonesia. So Nurul Iman has 32 uh, economic units, economic businesses. So we choose them as the mentor for other pesantren. So uh, at least I believe we have reached now around 300 percent trend yeah i mean we try to develop the economic uh, sector economic unit so we empower the economic unit of percent trend we develop their businesses even we provide them with uh, a digital platform yeah we have been finished with that and it is now working alhamdulillah yeah so we call it a virtual market for percent trend so we have i do believe the indonesian are very familiar with this here. Yeah. In Indonesia, we have more than 30,000 pesantren in Java only, in Java only. 30,000 pesantren. This is excluding Kalimantan, excluding Sumatra Island and other islands. Yeah. So I do believe that we have probably more than 100,000 pesantren. Yeah. Like when I, when I came to Manado, if I can share, yeah, Manado is one of uh, mostly non-Muslim people yeah, in, in, in Sulawesi. I, I was there. Yeah, I, I came for like uh, giving a, a talk by, by the government there. And then surprisingly, I was informed that in Manado, yeah, can you imagine, in Manado, there are 700 pesantren. MashaAllah, I was quite surprised. 700 in pesantren, I mean, in, in, in Manado, which is very well known as a majority, a non-Muslim majority population in, 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 in Manado. But they still have 700 pesantren, subhanAllah. <laughs> so how can, I mean, uh, you, need, you can imagine how many uh, thousands of pesantren in, in Java. So we try to, uh, basically in Bank Indonesia itself, we target to have thousands of pesantren. Yeah, we have started from 200 pesantren, but we target 1,000 pesantren. I mean, we, we, we have uh, amazing target. Yeah. But again, this is not the mandate of the central bank. We, we do this together with the shareholders, the stakeholders even. Yeah. 
like Minister of Religion, National Ulama Council, also uh, 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 Badan Amil Zakat, uh, BWI, Badan Wakaf Indonesia, and others uh, supporting institution. So this is another one, yeah, the pesantren as I mentioned. This, uh, this is mentioning some pesantren, Al-Islah Al Tajuk, Al-Mu'minin. Uh, these are some of the pesantren that we assisted. So we purchase agriculture machines yeah, uh, to, to inflate their product. Yeah. Also, uh, this is Al-Ittifaq. So they have greenhouse. So we assisted them. So we, we provide them with uh, some uh, sort of programs, yeah, funding to accelerate their, their, their business, the greenhouse. Also pl uh, planning for Chile yeah, in this pesantren Al-Islah Tajuk. Yeah, there, there are a lot of pesantren, to be honest. And when I mean that that we assisted to 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 have uh, more products, and we also open uh, international market. So we identify some of them have already had international market. Yeah. So uh, I I remember one of pesantren in in Java. I think in in Bogor or in Tasikmalaya, they uh, already export uh, what is it shrimp to Japan. Masya Allah, not shrimp, uh, lobster in particular, lobster. They export lobster to Japan. So they have already had market in Japan. Masya Allah, I said, wow. So we can utilize this pesantren to teach others who are very interested in uh, following the same path, yeah? like uh, uh, having the same, uh, same businesses, uh, lobster businesses and others. So because they have opened uh, a market to Japan. So. This is a huge potential. And please remember that uh, I keep mentioning this to, uh, to a various event in various events that uh, Islamic economy is not only bank. Islamic finance is not only sukuk. It's not only about insurance, but it is everything related to Islam. It is called Islamic, Islamic, even we call it Islamic way of life, way of life. So, when we like dress, yeah, when we dress Islamically, when we go to Islamic school, when we purchase halal food, when we like everything, everything, when we watch a movie, which is Islamic movie, everything Islamic, that is Islamic economic or Islamic way of activities. Yeah. So we need to broaden our scope by thinking of a lot of things regarding the Islamic one. Yeah. It doesn't have to be uh, banking or insurance or suku or various like Islamic cooperative, Islamic pension fund, everything. So like Pesantren, this is one of the pillars in Indonesia yeah, uh, to, uh, to inflate the Islamic economy in the country because they, they are huge and they are, uh, they are having their own businesses. So if we can assist them, by accelerating the product, opening the market, they can uh, support the GDP of a country. And then what is the role during and after pandemic? So this is the pandemic program. So uh, again, uh, Bank Indonesia, particularly with our masjid, together with uh, Pondok Pesantren. So we collaborate with Pondok Pesantren, with uh, government, yeah, we have link and match supply demand yeah, to optimize the ZISWAP, Zakat, Infaq, Sodako, and AUKAP yeah, to accelerate uh, Islamic boarding school production and, SM, and SME. So in agriculture, for example, these are, pro these are projects during the pandemic, to be honest. So we keep assisting their uh, 10 of their uh, greenhouse horticultural uh, in West Java, building herb, agriculture supporting services, building storage for Islamic boarding school to absorb surplus of production, uh, provide machinery for production. O also for fishery, we build storage to store surplus of production. Yeah. We also provide a healthy environment in Islamic boarding school. So, and also action plan, yeah, we, we want to provide disinfectant. It is, it is already provided, I believe, yeah, when when I constructed uh, this slide, uh, it, it was like last year. And I believe uh, this year has been, has been done. 
regarding disinfectant and healthy, safe infrastructure, sanitation, a building a polyclinic in Islamic boarding school. So these are the projects uh, which are done during uh, the beginning of the pandemic. Also, uh, we expand uh, the scope of pesantren yeah, into 15 new pesantren in East Java yeah, uh, in terms of the agriculture program. We call it greenhouse. Yeah. It will hopefully give social impact yeah, by opening uh, new business opportunities in these five pesantren. Also economic impact, fostering economic activities in the pandemic, such as increasing agriculture production for immediate selling. Again, when we talk about selling, as I mentioned before, we are not only opening a new market domestically, but also internationally. And we also provide, we are not providing, it is already working now. Yeah, uh, 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 what we call it a virtual market for Pasantren. So this virtual platform, yeah, uh, compiled together thousands of Pasantren. So they just register and they just list their product yeah, in this platform. So, and then like uh, whenever we transact uh, online uh, here in, in Malaysia, for example, we can also uh, in Indonesia uh, provide a transaction uh, with the uh, Pesantren product because they, they have a lot of uh, uh, Pesantren product. Also during the pandemic, yeah, we utilize uh, Pondok Pesantren, yeah, boarding school product and SME to assist the needy. We optimize the ZSWAP, yeah. For social safety net, we enhance halal value chains with link and match mechanism. And uh, uh, technically or internally in, in, Indone in Bank Indonesia, we have Rumah Amal Social Bank Indonesia. It is uh, organized and managed by Bank Indonesia Masjid. Yeah. So we have like uh, more than 30 uh, offices in the country, uh, in every province, uh, also uh, sub-province, municipal. So we occupy the masjid mechanism, uh, masjid management, to, uh, to utilize, uh, to collect and distribute social funds among our employees. So these funds uh, is utilized for like COVID-19 uh, assistance to assist SME uh, strategic partners uh, by yeah, using uh, Bank Indonesia uh, social uh, project. Uh, besides Bank Indonesia government, there is also Badan Amil Zakat, which is very specialized. This is government-owned government institution specializing in uh, uh, managing the social funds. They have, they have also a program during the pandemic. They call it Special Emergency Response Program in securing existing program. Yeah. For the first one, they have Health Emergency Program, uh, promoting health also curative program, medical equipment, distribution of personal protective equipment and others. Social and economic emergency program. They have family logistic package, cash for work, distribution of zakatul fitr, and mustahik cash assistance. And uh, uh, they are not only uh, uh, using or introducing a new program during the pandemic, but they also keep uh, applying the existing one, like establishing a protocol to secure existing program, Major of the program is for mustahik, adaptation and adjustment of the existing program, business process adjustment, and output adjust. So, of course, the business is, uh, of course, uh, a well-mandated institution for uh, distributing and managing the social sale fund. So, uh, uh, recently, we realized that uh, Islamic economy, including the social funds, cannot be separated from the well advancement of technology like a fintech. So we realized that in the economy of 4.0, Islamic social funds can also be utilized, yeah, optimized by using fintech, yeah, digital Islamic social finance platform. Yeah. We identify, I believe also here in Malaysia, a social platform yeah, to collect uh, social funds yeah, from, from uh, the Muzaki. So these are some examples of the Indonesian uh, platform uh, to collect uh, what is it called funding or social funds from, from the Muzaki, yeah. including banks here, BNI, Sharia, uh, Islamic banks, also uh, some uh, social platform, Alami, Zahir, 
uh, a lot of a lot of uh, social platform. Also, Basnas itself they have introduced uh, digital based uh, zakat payment. Yeah, BWI the same one, uh, Badan Wakaf Indonesia. They have uh, announced I I think two or three years uh, so or two or three weeks back they have uh, launched their uh, platform for uh, paying Aukaf online. Also for having a digital based uh, Nazir permission. So when there is a Nazir and they want to be a formal Nazir registered and permitted by a national Aukaf uh, body, they can just simply fill out the registration form uh, in, uh, online and then BWI will assist the registration, the institution, everything, and then the approval will be coming from the platform. So it will ease the, the Nazir to have a formal recognition, formal approval by the authority. So these are probably not many, but we have started. So this is this is a, a brand new, if I can say, brand new uh, sukuk, yeah. Uh, for Indonesia, at least uh, in Malaysia, I do identify that in other countries they also have uh, aukaf based sukuk. Yeah, but in Indonesia, one of the product is called cash aukaf ling sukuk. Yeah, it is a mainly um, a sukuk to be honest, issued by the government. But uh, the intention of uh, the government to issue this sukuk is for utilizing the aukaf fund, uh, aukaf money. Yeah, cash aukaf. Uh, there are two types of cash aukaf link sukuk. The one that I uh, presented here is the first uh, version, the first version of cash aukaf link sukuk, in which wakif, yeah, temporary or permanent, they just uh, put their aukaf fund yeah, in uh, Nazir, uh, in directly to the uh, partner of Nazir or directly to the BWI. So uh, it it, it was uh, mandated to have a 50 billion uh, rupiah or 5 million US dollar. Yeah? To, uh, that is a minimum amount of uh, 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 what is it? Uh, Nazir or BWI to purchase uh, cash aukaf link sukuk, namely sukuk wakaf Indonesia. So Minister of Finance issued sukuk wakaf Indonesia certificate and it was purchased by BWI. How many or how much is the uh, the price? Fifty billion rupiah or five million US dollar. If I can simply uh, have exchange rate of uh, ten thousand rupiah per US dollar, <laughs> just to have a simple simple counting. Yeah. So then, uh, by receiving this Alka fund, the Ministry of Finance will use this fund to finance the government project, and then as the appreciation. The, the Minister of Finance will give coupon, but this coupon is not as a return. We don't say it as a return because our cup is ridiculous if we say it, it is a return from our cup. No, it is not a return. It is appreciation uh, coming from Minister of Finance as a, in, in the form of coupon to the investors. And then we will ask the commitment from the investors to use this uh, coupon fund to, uh, to construct, in this case, uh, to support the uh, hospital, a, a hospital specially for eyes. So we, it is a eye hospital, yeah, hospital for eye, eye center, eye center. So we help this uh, hospital specially for eyes, yeah, and then uh, the uh, the masakin, yeah, uh, the fakir. Can now just simply come to the hospital without any payment, yeah, because the payment uh, has been backed up by this uh, outcome. Uh, I mean, coupon payment of this outcome. So uh, there are at least two benefits, yeah, uh, coming from uh, this product. Yeah, and the the principal is used by the Ministry of Finance to construct the a government's project, which is hopefully uh, comply with uh, outcome. And then the coupon is used to assist other supporting uh, social projects. That is the first, uh, we call it a variant. <laughs> if it is in pandemic, we call it variant. Or in Sukuk, probably we call it a first series of uh, cash outcome links. The second one, we call it uh, uh, 
Sukuk Wakaf Retail. So it is a retail Wakaf Sukuk. So uh, unlike the first one, this is a retail Wakaf Sukuk. So this retail Wakaf Sukuk is offered directly to the bank. So BWI is not uh, uh, engaged uh, um, bilaterally with the with the Minister of Finance. So Minister of Finance will deal directly with Islamic banks. So Islamic banks will over and collect our fund yeah, from investors, meaning our keep, yeah. And then when they have enough money, uh, cash our cup, they will purchase yeah, retail our cup sukuk from the government. So that is the second series, uh, series of uh, our cup sukuk. The second project, to be honest, still ongoing, still ongoing. We hope that this also be. Uh, this can also be executed shortly, inshallah. So this is called Sukuk Link Aukaf. Unlike the, the previous one, in which we utilize uh, Aukaf fund, yeah, cash Aukaf, uh, this second type of Sukuk is uh, utilized or is uh, targeting to utilize uh, Aukaf land, Aukaf land, not cash Aukaf. So since we are having more than 400,000 Aukaf land, as I mentioned, more than 435,000 Aukaf land. So this empty land yeah, will be certified by BWI. And since it is managed by the Nazir, if you can have a look in the slide. Yeah. Uh, in the first one, in the first stage, Nazir will have an agreement with state-owned enterprise yeah, to lease this Aukaf land. Uh, to the state-owned enterprise, which will issue a sukuk. Uh, uh, we can call it uh, ejara sukuk, yeah? to grab or to collect uh, sukuk fund, sukuk proceeding from the investors. Yeah? So once we have uh, sukuk funds, yeah, sukuk proceeds uh, from investors, it will be uh, used to construct infrastructures on the top of our cup land. Of course, we, we contact a contractor to help uh, to, uh, constructing the infrastructure. So when this infrastructure is done, it will be rented to the tenant and come, uh, money coming from this rental will be shared yeah, uh, among the Nazir, state-owned enterprise and investors. But then the Nazir can release its share yeah, to other parties just to have a bigger share of ownership uh, in, in this infrastructure building like building or something. So at the end of the period, hopefully Nazir will be owning this infrastructure. So it is particularly almost similar as Zamzam Tower. If, uh, if you are familiar with yeah, Zamzam Tower in Makkah, in which the, uh, the land is uh, Aukaf. Of course, uh, every uh, single land in Makkah is uh, Aukaf land. Yeah, cannot be owned by individual. <laughs> Because Ma uh, Makkah is a holy land, so any land there is Aukaf. So uh, when there is a hotel there, uh, the building of hotel or the, the infrastructure is a commercial basis, but not I mean, uh, but not the land itself. The land is Aukaf. So like a Zamzam Tower, uh, the building, uh, the Zamzam Tower is Aukaf land, but not the land itself. That is Aukaf land. So we copy the model. So. Uh, hopefully, uh, it is it is now uh, being uh, accelerated by the OGK, Indonesia Financial Services Authority. But we are still waiting. Hopefully, that this model will will be uh, utilized. Inshallah. Thank you uh, for listening to my very short sharing. Thank you, Dr. Mahmoud. Inshallah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rifki, for very uh, fruitful. And insightful uh, sharing uh, and presentation. Uh, I believe uh, all the participants who are joining us via Zoom or via Facebook uh, benefit a lot from uh, your rich information and data, especially on the development of Islamic social finance in Asia uh, during a post-pandemic, even in normal uh, situation. I think uh, we have uh, heard uh, the, from uh, Dr. Rifki on his uh, sharing uh, regarding the impact of the uh, pandemic to the economy and policy measure. The presentation also covered the role of Islamic social finance, in particular reference 
uh, to the uh, COVID-19 recovery uh, planning, especially uh, in the use of ZISWAF, uh, and in particular reference to the use of uh, WACAF. Yeah? And I think some point that uh, I would like to highlight here from the presentation is that we need to understand that Islamic economy should not be understood in very localized area, uh, namely financial institution, and even more uh, narrow into uh, banking sector. It is very uh, wide uh, area uh, comprising uh, the entire aspect of uh, our life including the, the untapped and neglected uh, third sector, isn't it, Dr. Rifki? Uh, like uh, Zaka, Infaq, Sadaka, yes. and Waka. Uh, and then another thing that uh, I also uh, managed to, uh, to take a note on to the uh, potential of Waka in Asia, especially on uh, we call unproductive and immovable Waka, like Waka land which comprise not less than 435,000. Is it uh, registered or is it the unregistered, Dr. Dr. Rifki, for this, uh, the 435? Uh, total, uh, total, total registered and non -registered. Comprising, yeah. Comprising the, the, yes. yeah, the total, comprising the registered and unregistered uh, work of land, which is mostly unproductive, yeah? Because uh, it is uh, yes. like in the form of a registered one. Yes, yeah. registered one is, is quite one productive. Only, yeah. Yes, registered one is around 25% only. I see. <laughs> the rest are non registered. <laughs> non registered and then unproductive uh, idols. And then when we heard about the work of Indonesia, we only uh, refer to three things masjid, uh, pesantren, and kuburan. <laughs> That's all. Uh, maybe uh, on this basis, uh, Dr. Rifki, I would like to ask before I, I, I pick up a question from uh, the viewers from the floor. Uh, how basically uh, the, uh, the strategy, uh, especially uh, initiated by uh, Badan Wakaf Indonesia to increase the awareness of the public especially the pesantren, because uh, earlier you mentioned on how do you uh, basically channel the work of fun to the pesantren, to various activity in pesantren. While in pesantren, as far as I'm concerned, they are very much uh, Shafi'i dominated yeah, uh, in terms of their paradigm, which uh, we already know the Shafi'i madhab uh, restrict uh, the use of a wakaf in the form of cash wakaf. Yeah. While uh, yeah. the wakaf collected by Bank Indonesia or managed by uh, Badan Wakaf Indonesia are mostly in the form of cash wakaf. So yeah. how basically uh, does Bank Indonesia or in this case Badan Wakaf Indonesia can convince uh, the pesantren to accept uh, cash wakaf? Because I, I'm coming from the pesantren, I understand the, the what they call the, the resistance yeah. uh, from uh, the pesantren toward the acceptance of a movable wakaf, in particular reference to cash wakaf in this uh, respect. Maybe you want to respond on this uh, on this uh, aspect first before we... Yeah, uh, yeah. Pick yeah, up very, yeah, very interesting question. <laughs> so to be honest, when we uh, try to launch this uh, outcome uh, product, Cash out cup link sukuk. That is that is a program to be honest. So the instrument is called Sukuk Wakaf Indonesia and Sukuk Wakaf Retail. Two variants, two series. Yeah. So the first series was issued in May last mm, year. Last so year. it was in the first uh, first entrance of pandemic in Indonesia. So it was successfully issued in the beginning of the pandemic. Alhamdulillah. And I think during Ramadan, last Ramadan. They just issued uh, this the third time. The third. The third oh, th this year, yeah? Yeah, this year. The third times of Sukuk Aukaf retail. Yeah. For again for the social purposes. So uh, how do we convince the pesantren like uh, to adopt this type of model? Firstly, we approach National Sharia Board. We realize that Bank Indonesia is not the authority for for <laughs> Islamic fatwa or yeah, yeah. a verdict. Uh, so this kind of thing. So we came to uh, National Sharia Board uh, to have the fatwa on this product, on this program. Mm. And then they mentioned that uh, cash outcome has been there in uh, Aukaf Act. So we have had Aukaf Act. 
Hmm. So in the act, it is literally mentioned that aukaf can be in the form of physical aukaf or cash aukaf. So it is legally, uh, I mean, uh, recognized. So, but then to support this program, uh, National uh, Sharia Board issued the fatwa. We call it not fatwa because we have some uh, some products. We call it a fatwa for for general purposes and uh, Sharia opinion, Sharia opinion. So it is particularly for certain authorities like uh, for Minister of Finance. National Sharia Board is not issuing fatwa, but they are issuing Sharia opinion regarding uh, government sukuk, for example. So it is particularly for the government sukuk, not for others. So for this type of uh, cash outcome, we have issued uh, Sharia opinion. So it is allowed in Sharia. So and then by having this, we socialize, we track investors, please. Uh, if you are interested in uh, extending social fund for uh, for the sake of uh, the government project and to help the others, uh, please, we have a platform for that. We call it uh, Cash Outcome uh, Sukuk. Yeah. <laughs> so that is that is the way that we try to convince. Uh, yeah, yeah. So via the uh, national authority, yeah. National, yeah. Sharia Con uh, National Sharia Council of MUI uh, to issue yeah. fatwa or opini sharia ya, on the uh, the ruling uh, of cash wakaf and as well as the act ya, wakaf act. Okay, yeah. uh, 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 I I wish basically you you could pick up uh, my pesan alma mater, my pesan tren, sedogiri as one of the example in your slides. Oh, earlier. of course, oh, of course, that is the advanced pesan <laughs> tren. <laughs> Okay, uh, Dr. Rifki, if uh, you allow me, I would like to pick up uh, some question from uh, the, the, the participant. First question in regard to the Zerka collection. As you are aware, the Zerka collection in Indonesia is still very low. I think also in, in Malaysia, especially yeah. uh, simply because Zerka in Indonesia is treated uh, not at par as Malaysia as a deductible, as a tax deduction. Mm. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, the question is, how does the government or stakeholder uh, increase the collection of, of zakat? Yeah, yeah. To, to, to increase the collection of zakat from the government, especially here from Basnas as mm -hmm. the uh, central authority for the zakat collection and management, as well as the distribution. Yeah, uh, if I can say it uh, classically, or if I, if I avoid the word traditionally, <laughs> So or I can uh, say normally we just follow a normal way of mm -hmm. uh, collecting zakat. So we uh, like advertise zakat payment uh, through media, and we also establish uh, a lot of uh, we call it amil sub amil offices. Yeah, we call it laz and upz. Yeah, you need to pull zakat, UTZ, and then LAZ, uh, L, oh, what is it, L-A-Z, yeah, L-A-Z, yeah, LAZ and UTZ, yeah. Uh, in every small area in Indonesia, yeah, to be like the arm's length or business, yeah. we also have BASDA, Badan Amil Zakat in, in province uh, level or in municipal level to collect uh, zakat fund directly from the muzaki. Uh, that is uh, like uh, a normal way of uh, grabbing this zakat fund. But uh, of course, at the end of the day, I believe uh, zakat is coming back to the trust of the muzaki, to the institution. I keep mentioning this and I keep discussing this with uh, zakat business uh, board. Yeah that you need to increase the trust from the public with this type of institution. Even though you are now institution, like government institution, a legal institution, but I don't think people recognize your, your existence, your institution. If we just simply ask person, like walking around uh, on the road, do you know business? 
I don't think <laughs> they might recognize Basnas. Probably some of them, but not uh, all of them. So we need to uh, like uh, have uh, a more widespread uh, socialization on on Basna. But uh, that is that is a normal way of uh, increasing uh, zakat. But uh, in the last two years, Basnas has had a commitment from the government to uh, oblique the what is it state owned employee yeah the government employee to directly pay the zakat to basna so it is now mandatory so uh, for every uh, state owned employee uh, every month there will be a uh, deduction of their salary for zakat in fact if i can share uh, in bank indonesia for example some of the employees are complaining why do you oblige me? Because I have my own target to pay for zakat. Like I have my own family, relatives, neighbor, which need my zakat. But you are, uh, I mean, uh, requiring me to, to just uh, simply pay my zakat to this national, national institution. Uh, but another critics, I'm not sure if it is critics or not, probably inputs, yeah? inputs or questions, not the critics, from one of the very high level person, I don't want to say the name, <laughs> very high level person, uh, uh, the ulama in Indonesia, he said in the media, on the TV, regarding this model, he said, how can we ensure that when all of us, the government employee, the government institutions are obliged to pay, yeah, to extend or to, to, to post, to, to just locate the zakah, the social fund directly to, to Basnas. Yeah. How can we ensure that this fund will be optimally utilized for social fund? And then if the money is collected by, for example, Masjid, Laz, UPZ, yeah, Unit Pengumpul Zakat, and then uh, all of these um, arms length of Basnas are uh, pulling together this zakafan in Basna. And then uh, I think around one month or two months, these funds will be returned to this uh, masjid or laz or UPZ for the distribution. But then the person said, how can we ensure that you are going to return 100% of this zakafan? Because you are going to take some of them <laughs> for your yeah, again, uh, business is well trusted, but uh, in terms of the question, that is a valid question. That is a valid question, to be honest. So even it is coming from a very top person. So uh, again, it comes back to the trust by, by the public. It is, it is not something very easy. <laughs> so coming, coming back to this, to this trust, uh, Dr. Rizky, uh, Dr. Rizky, uh, in Indonesia, I think we have a different structure of the zakah management uh, from Malaysia. Malaysia is uh, a very centralized uh, zakah institution uh, where the zakah management is ad administered by uh, the state under the Islamic Religious Council. So not everybody, mm -hmm. not every entity can basically yeah. manage the zakah uh, yeah. like private uh, pesantren and other. Uh, but in Asia, we are open. So the zakah management is administered by uh, both uh, government, like Basnas, Lasnas, but also many private uh, institutions as well, uh, like Dompet Duafa and uh, Pesantren. Uh, like Sidugiri, we do have this Lasnas uh, to, uh, uh, and this work to manage the workups. So from your point of view, uh, which one is basically more uh, effective in terms of creating a trust? Uh, whether the structure of zakah administration is based on a centralized zakah uh, uh, management or de decentralized that, like that, that we have currently in Indonesia? <laughs> it depends, to be honest, from my perspective, it depends on the readiness, on the understanding and uh, like uh, psychological aspect of the people. Yeah, If they trust more on the centralized system, we can follow centralized system. If they trust more on the like uh, local government, local institution, uh, we can follow this uh, central, uh, not centralized, decentralized model. Yeah. But uh, beside that, 
type of uh, uh, model or system, there are also some parties uh, uh, involved or uh, taking crucial part in this type of uh, zaka enhancement or zaka expansion. The ulama, the ulama. I do believe that uh, in the same as Malaysia, we have a lot of ulama here. But uh, to be honest, from my perspective, from my humble opinion, we haven't occupied uh, a well-known ulama. The one that I say well-known is uh, those who are having thousands of jama'ah, <laughs> thousands of followers, if I if that is the name of like millennials tend mm -hmm. to say followers, yeah. Millions of followers uh, to to socialize about uh, zakat or social fund because most of them are giving materials on uh, akidah, for example. Uh, only uh, some of them are probably saying about uh, social funds. So we need to also engage these very prominent, very well known, yeah, very famous uh, ulama to like help us socializing uh, this uh, social fund. Okay, thank you, Dr. Rifki, for uh, the, the response. Uh, can I move to the next question? Inshallah, we'll, we'll uh, finish uh, the, the session before 10, inshallah, so that inshallah, allow you yeah. to take a rest because you mentioned oh, earlier no that you have a full of meeting today. <laughs> so I think I have to be fair to, uh, to you. <laughs> no worries. Okay, uh, uh, next question is uh, on uh, the issue of uh, health. Many people are becoming aware of uh, pesticide uh, and then uh, herbicide and GMO. GMO, if I'm not mistaken, stand for genetically modified organism, which mm. has health impact on human being and environment as well. Then they are now trying to move uh, uh, on organic vegetable, vegetarians, which is healthier and environmentally uh, friendly. Mm. Question is, does the program that you share earlier, uh, which has been supported by central bank uh, to use to work out for agriculture whatsoever, consider this kind of aspect, the organic ag agriculture or any, wow. <laughs> any product? <laughs> uh, I think the, 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 the question is quite uh, critical advanced. in this sense. Yeah, advanced. <laughs> Yeah, to be honest, not, not yet. <laughs> no, yeah, to that level. But, yeah, we just follow the current product. We just improve the quality. So the one that we uh, pursue are first, we ensure that uh, we can increase the volume of the product. Secondly, we have a halal certification from the halal authority. Thirdly, how can we ensure the hygiene uh, of the product? Also, mm -hmm. like a aging of the product and next we want to expand the marketing uh, and the market itself for the product not only domestic market but also international market by having this at least we can uh, push the economic sector of pasantren mm -hmm. so like advanced product or like the one that you mentioned we, we haven't touched that one <laughs> So we are still at the level of adapting Islamic social finance instrument, not to the extent toward this uh, environmentally responsible finance. <laughs> oh, not yet. Not <laughs> yeah, not yet to that level. Yes, 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 uh, yes. Socially uh, responsible uh, product. Uh, okay, yes. uh, I think last question, to Dr. Rifki, uh, if uh, you allow me to, to read this. Uh, oh, sure, the sure, question sure. is no. on the challenges, uh, the challenges yeah. uh, of the uh, uh, Islamic uh, on promoting Islamic social finance and how uh, can Islamic social finance can be integrated into the existing Islamic uh, commercial finance or financial institution mm -hmm. in, 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 in particular. And then what uh, you can see the, the, the future uh, prospect of uh, Islamic finance uh, uh, post pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very interesting question, to be honest. Uh, I have some thought on this. Uh, my first idea would be the government and the authorities are now having a lot of uh, intention with Islamic finance. Like in Malaysia, it is quite common. You have started uh, this 
effort like long years back, yeah, uh, like one or two decades back. But in Indonesia, it is nowadays we are having huge attention by the government to support Islamic economy. And then, of course, by having strong support from the government, yeah, we can uh, also have their intention to accelerate Islamic social fund, Islamic social finance. And in particular, the government is very uh, uh, common now to issue government to cook for commercial purpose. And since we have issued a government sukuk for outcome, outcome project, outcome uh, what is it proposes, we can also expect that this type of uh, Islamic social funds or Islamic social sector can be one of the government fiscal instruments. That is my idealism to be honest. So when we have fiscal instrument, we should not only relying on kind of existence fiscal instrument tax, for example, like uh, government bonds, for example, we can also rely on Islamic social funds. Uh, zakat, zakat should be the government instrument, to be honest, because it is enforced, can be enforced by the government, uh, zakat. So why don't we use this as one of the government fiscal instrument? So that is my idealism. Hopefully we can reach this level. And then uh, secondly, uh, we need to uh, engage more parties in order to integrate Islamic social funds and Islamic commercial funds, like ulama, uh, famous person, a uh, well-trusted person, yeah, to integrate uh, Islamic commercial and uh, social sectors. Because like conglomerates, for example, they are having huge money. So if they uh, commit to put their uh, social funds in Islamic uh, social institution, like Baznas or other social social institution, it will accelerate uh, the role of Islamic social funds in the economy. Yeah. And then uh, another one uh, would be uh, uh, the commitment of uh, not only government, but also all uh, government entities like ministries, uh, like uh, financial services authority, yeah. Uh, and other government entities to uh, to be together to accelerate uh, Islamic commercial and social sectors together. Yeah. But again, it is simply to be said, but it is difficult to be uh, to be done. <laughs> uh, but uh, we 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 can uh, pursue this. We can uh, proceed this with, uh, like for example, the Malaysian success story by having top-down approach from the top level, from the head of the country into the bottom. Uh, like uh, why well, Indonesia is approaching from the bottom to the top. So, but currently, Alhamdulillah, we have commit from commitment from the government. So we are now also pursuing top to the bottom, not only bottom to the top. So Alhamdulillah, we can combine this together. So uh, by having this strong commitment, hopefully, integrating commercial and social sector can be realized. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Dr. Rifki, for a very nice, uh, at least closing uh, statement. Uh, <laughs> and very happy to hear that a central banker has a very strong vision and idealism toward this Islamic social finance. I think not many bankers, especially <laughs> central banker, have this kind of mind. And yeah. we have, and uh, I wish that uh, they are uh, many more people like you that can promote uh, the uh, Islamic social finance, yeah. an important sector, even the engine of growth uh, in the Islamic yeah. civilization. Yes. You, you you remind me on one one interesting uh, chat. Yeah, when I came to I think Sidogiri, Sidogiri uh, Baitul Mal yeah, in East Java, uh, we had uh, like a uh, visiting program. To this Sidogiri, uh, what is it, uh, BMT. And in that time, we also invited international participants mm -hmm. to come together to look at uh, the project. And then one of the participants was an uh, 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 employee of this BNM. <laughs> and then uh, she was surprised and she asked me, 
how can Bank Indonesia assist pesantren or halal industry? Because you are not mandated for this yeah. type of uh, Islamic real sector. I said to her, based on the legal aspect, yes, there is no mandate. But from the Islamic perspective, there is a mandate from the Quran <laughs> for us to not only accelerate the commercial sector, but also the real sector. I mean, not only like financing, I like, um, like banking or insurance or other uh, financial institution, but also directly to the real sector. Even helping the needy, that is mandated in the Quran. <laughs> we should not only rely on the legal aspect, but also from the Quran. And she was love to me. <laughs> I said, yeah, very interesting. But again, we cannot budget ourselves for like uh, a policy budget for this type of uh, program. We budget uh, uh, the program by by having a CSR budget. So we increased our CSR budget just to assist like Pesantren or Aukab Nazir, Nazir and Amil to, to, to help their operation, to accelerate the activity. So we are using CSR, CSR budget, not policy budget. No, not printed money budget. Yeah. <laughs> So I think it's very, very, very nice to hear this kind of uh, what we call movement, especially from the Central Bank of Indonesia, the Central Bank, which is mainly mandated basically for monetary policy, but now move toward or beyond the mandate given, uh, um, which is Islamic social finance. Even uh, if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Central Bank of Indonesia is one of the pioneers of the issue and of the work of uh, core principle, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, was, yeah, together. Uh, by yeah. Uh, Islamic Development Bank. Yeah, Malaysia, India, Malaysia well, Bangladesh, Central Bank. Uh, yeah, are all in the working group for mm -hmm. for this uh, standard. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So I hope, inshallah, uh, we uh, can see you again, uh, and to to share uh, your thought uh, uh, with us, uh, with the participant. And last uh, request from the participant: Can the sh the slide be shared? Oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yes, yes. Okay, for the benefit yes, yeah. of More the participant. In our, uh, with that, thank you, Dr. Rifki, very much uh, for you, your Dr. kind uh, sharing session. I believe the participant benefit a lot from your ex your vast experience uh, and, and knowledge. Uh, and then we uh, end our session by Majlis Kaffaro. Subhanakallah, bika ashadu ala ilaha ila ala sabdu wa Inshallah, uh, we will see you again in another occasion. Uh, thank you very much for uh, participants, uh, for the participant, for the constructive uh, discussion. Uh, my apologies for shortcoming. Uh, I, with, with that, I end uh, the session uh, by saying Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.